Su Excelencia. Your Excellency, President of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen. His Excellency, President of the Federative Republic of Brazil, Mr. Lula da Silva. His Excellency, Prime Minister of Spain, Pedro Sanchez, President of the IDB, Ambassadors. President Oya Johnson, thank you very much for attending today. I would like to start by thanking Mr. Sanchez, Mr. Lula and Madame van der Leyen for their excellent introductions. It's an honor to be here today and my colleague Iran Golfen and the head of the team of the IDB and CAF development teams who have provided support that was vital for this meeting to be held. Being in Brussels reminds me of what Jean Monnet said, a pioneer of Europe. He called on everybody to be ambitious and he said we have to decide whether people are ambitious for themselves or for they, what, what they want to achieve. After eight years where we've had a lack of political dialogue and a political vacuum, now Latin America and Europe need to be more ambitious and need to be more involved in our pathway to sustainability and progress. We're living turbulent times, as we've heard, and our citizens are expecting concrete results from these high-level meetings. Now is the time to speed up our activities, what we are doing And we need to redefine our, our bi-regional relationship. To a great extent, the relationship between the EU and the LAC countries has, in fact, uh, been a little bit one-sided up until now. We have done activities in certain countries, in certain ecosystems, in certain areas. And that is what has defined the trade relationship and development and sustainability that we have had so far. But that has left gaps. The LAC countries have a great deal that they can provide for the present and future of Europe. And similarly, as... Mr. Sanchez and Madame van der Leyen said, Europe has the capacity to actually help our regions as a whole, to benefit our citizens and to benefit the planet. In this ambition of achieving things, I welcome what Madame van der Leyen has said of financial allocation of 45 billions aimed at reducing poverty and inequality and ensuring that we move to a fair green transition and also ensuring we have a digital transition which can lead to more inclusive, sustainable transitions. We have an immense opportunity ahead of us to unite and to make progress against climate change and investing in innovation in new materials, renewable energy, digital services, electromobility and a new role for raw materials with the transfer of technology and strengthening our industry. And what Madame van der Leyen said was quite right and was very timely for the LAC countries. We don't want the LAC countries to be seen as an area where all we do is extract raw materials, but rather as a partner in solving global challenges. Partner, not just a supplier of raw materials. The same goes for the digital transition. We have to ensure that we have proper connectivity. We need to work on cybersecurity so that we can have digital solutions that will underpin our democratic systems. And the use of such technology in education systems, health systems and corporate systems is vital. We have to show that we're ambitious about what we can achieve, as Mr. Monet said, and that's what the Global Gateway is. It's one of the main vectors being used by our European partners and the IDB. 102 national and regional initiatives have been prepared to ensure connectivity to 85% of Colombians in the rural area by 2026 and helping to produce hydrogen in Chile and Uruguay, ensuring sustainability in San Jose, in Quinto, in Montevideo, in Sao Paulo, and also ensuring that we have more renewable energy in Jamaica, as we were discussing with the Prime Minister this morning. We also need to provide clean water and we also need to reduce 
Child malnutrition in Ecuador, for example, we're thinking about how we can use innovative financial instruments such as guarantees, hedging, loans, blends, all kinds of instruments to ensure progress. For this to happen, it's vital that we have partners such as the European Central Bank and the directors of the uh, International Monetary Fund. We are needing to be more audacious in designing financial instruments that can be used to help countries. And we, in June, actually had President Lula, President Macron, amongst others, at a high-level financial meeting last month. And the Financing in Common project is intended to accelerate the development and use of more financial instruments. The LAC countries have proven capacity when it comes to putting forward ideas and solutions. This bank, for example, actually was set up in 1968 as an bank that would finance development in Latin American countries. And that's what we need, a bank that is of the region, for the region, that works with its partners. And more than Spain and Portugal have been involved in this for more than 20 years to ensure that the LAC countries actually have the financing they need. And this benefits not just them, but also Europe. Sustainable development is something that actually grew out of the Rio Plus 20 summit in the LAC region. And that led to the strategic compass. Now, we see the Global Gateway as a tool whereby we can achieve the SDG goals by 2030. The Spanish presidency of the Council of the European Union shares this vision, this long-term vision, and actually doesn't want to see countries set against each other, but working together. That's the kind of ambition we should have. And I would thank Mr. Sanchez again for having called an unprecedented meeting of all the economics and finance ministers, which will take place in September in Santiago de Compostela. And I would like to thank the Prime Minister that has actually called for meetings of development banks too to be involved. This is going to be initiative of the World Bank, the IMF and us so that we can actually achieve, as Jean Monnet said. We are going to be working with our counterparts as well as the CELAC chairs to ensure our agenda is actually achieved. President van der Leyen, the last time I was in this building was 11 years ago with the Trade Minister of Colombia, where my Peruvian uh, colleague actually signed the free trade agreement. 11 years afterwards, this provides, this agreement provides Legal certainty in terms of the rules for both sides when it comes to trade. I listened to what President Ruler said. For us to have a Mercosur a reach, uh, a agreement, we need not just optimism, but we also need to look to the future. And as Mr Sanchez said, that in fact we have to look at the GDP that we have that is trade between the two blocks as well as with the US. But Mercosur agreement will lead to more ambitious and deeper trade relationships. And that will mean that, as Mr Lula has said, we will actually have a closer relationship. And we also have to bear in mind the tendering procedure launched by President Lula in May for regional integration and interconnectivity. That is one reason why Latin America is important, because it's an economic powerhouse with millions of uh, inhabitants and a very large GDP. We all hope that, in fact, we will be able to live up to the level of ambition that we've set ourselves and that we can achieve things together. We're at a turning point for democracy and our, we are seeing social movements in Europe and in Latin America that show this. And at times when, in fact, Europe has faced difficult times, Latin America has been there for us And there have been a lot of people who left Europe, all the different countries, 100 years ago, for Latin America. 
and who now their equivalents are fighting for a safer country. Going back to Jean Monnet, we may know who we are, but we are facing challenges in our existence which are likely to grow and we can only face those if we face them together. Latin American countries, Caribbean countries and European countries. Such a united stand is something that we can show to the rest of the world. We can show to the private sector, the banks, to sub-regional governments that we can, in fact, design a better world for all of us. Working together is something that reflects our commitments and we need the kind of decisions that will lead to a changing point in history. And CAF, as a sub-regional bank, CAF, as a part of CELAC, which promotes the interests of black countries, is more than ready and willing to work with all of you. Thank you for your attention.